ವಕ್ರತುಂಡ ಮಹಾಕಾಯ ಸೂರ್ಯಕೋಟಿ ಸಮಪ್ರಭ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಕುರು ಮೇ ದೇವ ಸರ್ವಕಾರ್ಯು ಸರ್ವದಾ ಸರಸ್ವತೀ ನಮಸ್ತುಭ್ಯಂ ವರದೆ ಕಾಮೂಪಿ ವಿದ್ಯಾರಂಭಂ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸ್ಪರ್ಭವತು ಮೇ ಸದಾ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರೇವ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಹರಿಓಮ್ ಇನ್ ಗ್ರೀಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನಾಯಗ್ರ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಇಗ್ನೋರೆಂಟ್ ದೆನ್ ದೇರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೀರಿಯನ್ಸಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಯಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಬ್ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಟ್ಲಿ ರಿಯಲ್ For one who inquires, one who's trying to figure out what their experiences are like, what is this world, then this goes from real to relative, from real to relative. For one who is infinite, then their experiences, this world, the technical word is would be unreal. So I was using thesaurus.com to try to come up with another word that starts with R. We have real relative. So I was looking for unreal and you know what came up? Romantic. <laughs> so for someone who's infinite, then this world is romantic. <laughs> and our scriptures, share lots of examples of that. I gave one last week of the horns of a rabbit. Yes? Do you remember that example? So I did some research and some more for you. All sourced from our scriptures, okay? The romantic or the unreal is like water from a mirage. Another is darkness on the sun another is fire from ice got three so far they all sound ludicrous another is butter coming from water <laughs> now they become more funny i think flowers from the air another is oil from water oil from water and the funniest one is hair on a turtle <laughs> where do these examples come from <laughs> hair on a turtle <laughs> so this is all <clears throat> visualizations of trying to find happiness in a source where there is only change now as your identification changes your relationship with the world changes from real to relative to romantic doesn't your behavior change too if you think this world is real everything becomes quite serious but if you feel this world is romantic all becomes quite joyous in shloka 17 shri ramana is explaining to us that we have only i'm going to repeat that word again only eva experienced 
the infinite. Right here, right now. And the words I'm using are wrong, because here and now is oriented towards space and time. What does infinity have to do with space and time? We are experiencing infinity. And for me to not benefit from that, this shows that I don't know that I'm experiencing infinity. And me not knowing the infinite, I can't destroy infinity. All I can do is ignore infinity. I am ignoring infinity, which is the same as not knowing infinity, which is the same as not benefiting from being infinite. And think carefully about ignorance. Ignorance can't just float randomly. Ignorance has to be associated with a entity, a real entity. That snake, we only visualize the snake because there's a rope there. If there is no rope there, why would we visualize the snake? Using Swami Chinmayan on this example, because there's a post, I visualize a ghost, but if there's no post, I don't visualize that ghost. So whenever we use the word avidya or ignorance, instead of focusing on that, try to appreciate the implication there has to be infinity. There has to be reality on which this ignorance is. Everyone's feeling those ideas. Okay, this last portion of Upadesh Saras is not light. It is demanding. Enlightenment is demanding. We move on to Shloka 18, the surgery of the mind continues. And one uh, teaching I want you to keep on reflecting on as we complete Upadesha Sara is the idea of our thoughts not being us so wild. The thoughts that are going on right now in the mind, this idea of the mind being real, is the mind real? The thoughts that you're experiencing right now, are those thoughts yours? Is this a wild teaching? Is this a ludicrous idea? Keep internalizing that. 18. Vrittayastvaham vrittamashitaha Vrittayastvaham vrittamashayaha Ashritaha, sorry, like Ashrayaha. Vrittayo mano vidyaham manaha Vrittayo mano vidyaham manaha Sri Ramana is sharing. He starts with the word tu. Tu means but or wait. In the last shloka, we dissected the mind somewhat. Now he goes in more deeply. The vrittayaha, the thoughts, these thoughts are only in relation to the vrittim, the vritti, which is the ashataha. And what is the vritti? The aham. Vritti. Okay, so this is the orientation of this first line, which means our thoughts are always moving towards objects. Our thoughts are generated because of objects. And here objects you need not just think about the materials in your room. It is the emotions of the mind. It is the ideas of the intellect. The more ideas you have, the more thoughts you have. The more emotions you have, the more thoughts you have. And the practice of this message, according to Rishi Patanjali, one of the don'ts 
in our lives is aparigraha, which means not to own anything you don't use. We shouldn't own anything we don't use. Shared more simply, the more materials you have, the more you have to think about those materials, correct? The more there are objects in your kitchen, the more you have to dust them, the more you have to replace them, and on and on and on. These thoughts are moving towards objects. These thoughts is like a relationship. These thoughts are like a relationship. <coughs> if there's objects and the thoughts are the relationship, what else has to be present? The subject. There has to be a subject. So dissecting this some more or applying labels, the thoughts that are going towards the objects, those are called the idam vritti. Idam means this. Idam means that. You know, I have thoughts about this. I have thoughts about that. But built into every Idam vritti is the aham vritti, is the I thought. Built into every thought of an object, there has to be the presence of the subject. A thought is a relationship that connects the subject to the object. The more objects there are, the more the subject goes towards those objects. So here Sri Ramana is highlighting this word, Ashitaha, because of the aham vritti, can there be a idam vritti? If you remove the subject, can there be an object by itself? There can't be an object by itself. Going into this more deeply, vrittayaha manaha. The mind is made up of these thoughts, vidya or vidhi. What we need to know is that the manaha, the mind, is actually only the aham vritti, is only the I part of the thought, the subject and not the object. Dependence is a gauge of reality. Dependence is a gauge of reality. The more dependent an entity is, the more real it is or the more unreal it is. The more dependent an entity, how many of you think that it's more real? The more dependent, the more real. How many of you feel the more uh, independent an entity, the more real it is? Yeah, the more independent an entity is, the more real it is. I'll reference Srimad Bhagavad Gita here, where Bhagavan Krishna says, I am not in them. They are in me. He's talking about creation. But sometimes this can be too abstract, so let's change this spatial orientation of in to dependence. I am not dependent on them. They are dependent on me. Simplify even more. Let's change the I to aham and the they to idam. I is the subject, idam is the object. I, the subject, does not depend on that or this, the object. Idam, that this, does depend on I. So who's more real? The creator or creation? Who's more real? Bhagavan Krishna or all of us who depend on Bhagavan Krishna. What's more real, the subject or the object? 
every thought we have, the idam part, the object part keeps on changing. From the first thought one would have had, let's say you're three years old, you know, where you become more conscious of, of the mind. Now if you're 23, 33, 43, 53, 63, 73, 83, 93, how many idams have flowed in and out of your perspective? Why do we give such reality to that idam? And we're not talking about billions either. Really this idam is, is changing trillions of times. And that aham has never, ever, ever, and never, ever, ever will change. Aham and idam. Later on in the same section of shlokas that Bhagavan Krishna is sharing with Prince Arjuna, later on he says, they are not in me either. <laughs> They are not in me either. Now the implication of that is there is no they. There is only Bhagavan Krishna. How this relates to us, there is no object. The mind, the thoughts are just the subject. The I, the I, the I. The nature of Aham is existence awareness. When you make the statement, I went to the bank, I drove a car, I logged in to this class, I am speaking, built into that I is Sat and Chit. The I is that presence, that existence, and know, that's K-N-O-W. I went to the bank, I know I went to the bank. I may not say the word K-N-O-W, but it's implied in there. I know I logged into class, I know I'm speaking. That know is that awareness, the chit. So now I rewind to how I began, really the review of the last shloka, we have only experienced infinity. Yes? Every time I feel I, existence awareness is there. And you've never not experienced I. In sleep, you just can't describe it. I is still, existence awareness is still present. We're just not able to describe it because of vocabulary that is the mind is sleeping. And that's okay. It's okay for us not to be able to describe everything. The aham vritti is being directed towards the idam. Sri Ramana, as he takes us deeper and deeper, is encouraging us to use this aham vritti for the subject to think about ananda, ananda. We are thinking, but we're not thinking about what we need. We're thinking about what we want. In our meditation in life course, I was sharing some insights from the Bhagavata Mahatmya, which is the introduction to Srimad Bhagavatam. It's an introduction into Bhagavan Krishna. And there's a narration where there's this young, vibrant woman. And she has her arms around these two old, decrepit men. And when she Narada asks her, who are you? Who are these two that you're with? She says, I am Bhakti. And these two are Vidya and Vairagya. These two are knowledge and independence, detachment. And what this teaches us is that we do have love in our lives. 
I see lots of families studying together. You love your spouse, you love your parents, you love your kids. That's obvious. But your parents, your spouse, your kids, your siblings, your roommate, are they the source of joy? Are they the source of ananda? They're not. We don't love this knowledge. And if vidya is not going to be healthy, then naturally vairagya, independence, is not going to be healthy. But if we start to love vidya, if we start to love remembering the subject, remembering what we need, then vairagya will come to life also. That independence will become evident. to shift our thoughts from idam to ananda is where Sri Ramana is taking us. Let us chant this shloka again. Now we know the words and the import. Vritta yastvaham vritte mashritaha vritta yo mano vidyaham manaha Oh. Nada.